The time has come. Execute Order 66. Yes, my lord. What's happening, YouTube? My name's Immortal Coil, and today we're talking Season 7 of The Clone Wars. Now this shit goes really quick. There's a lot to take in, so we're going to have to analyze this piece by piece. And it saddens me to say that as a Star Wars fan, this is the first thing I've been excited for in a long, long time. I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and hope that this is actually a sign that Disney Lucasfilm is trying to unfuck itself. However, I offer that with a caveat that this is the green light to the end of a David Filoni pre-Disney buyout endeavor. Under the auspices of George Lucas, of course. And it has been sitting in Dave Filoni's imagination for a couple years. So when we look at past interviews, we see that much of David Filoni's vision of what Season 7 would have been had they not gotten the axe or the notice or the pink slip or whatever they got had been translated into the Ahsoka Tano novel, which is good. It's good reading. Everybody should read that. Um, if for no other reason, just to give context or a shall we say, a certain point of view on what we're going to be given on Disney+. Plus. But the advantage that we as the audience have is, number one, the fact that David Filoni gives a fuck about Star Wars. Number two, his track record is impeccable. Every show he's come out with has been a hit that has touched on very poignant Star Wars moments and indeed has created some very poignant Star Wars moments. In many ways, this is David Filoni's baby, and in many ways, he is guiding his vision to its utmost pinnacle. And if the rumors are true, Filoni and Favreau are going to be given complete creative control over the future of Star Wars stories. Very excited for that. All right, let's bite into this. So it's a given that we're going to see piecemeal performances that take place over separate events at the end of the Clone War. And from what we can tell, some of these events are actually running concurrent with events in Revenge of the Sith, which I think is a very, very interesting point. We all know how Episode 3 pans out. We know what Anakin does, we know what Sidious does, and we know what becomes of the Republic. We know about Order 66, but how did everybody else take it? Let's see. The whole thing is being presented through the lens of a Darth Maul speech. And the way that this is playing out, I think that he is directly confronting Ahsoka Tano and laying it out. He knows a piece of the Sith plan. He doesn't know how it's going to go. He knows that he's not the apprentice, but he knows it's going to go down. And we know from Rebels where it's going to go and how these two eventually find each other again. We open up with Mandalore. I think it's very interesting that David Filoni cares so much about the Mandalorian culture that we're going to get this much exposition about the state of affairs prior to its fall. Now, I realize The Mandalorian is a runaway success, so of course Disney is going to want to exploit that. But the reason why The Mandalorian is such a success is because David Filoni cared to craft out and flesh out this backstory. Before The Clone Wars, the most people knew about Mandalore was that little insignia on Boba Fett's uh, shoulder armor. But that's the beauty about imaginative writers. They can take little things like that and create entire cultures out of it. We're given several very grim scenes. Masters Obi-Wan and Windu, their backs are against the wall. 
by a legion of droids. Fortunately, we know that they make it out because their fates are met elsewise in the films. And this is all imagery to press the threat of the oncoming Order 66. One of the best moments in this trailer is this upcoming scene where we hear the High Council meeting where Mace Windu senses a plot to destroy the Jedi. We've seen this exact scene in Revenge of the Sith, but this time we see it from Yoda's perspective instead of Master Windu's perspective. Next we see Maul pulling a Kylo Ben, trying to force torture some clone. And it starts to become clear that I think we're mostly going to be following Ahsoka Tano. She left the Jedi Order, she's fed up with their bullshit, but she doesn't know the toll that this has taken on her former master. Nor does she realize that his fall is imminent. It's also interesting to see the relationship amongst the clones, because it appears that there's a group of free thinkers who may have grown beyond the role of the simple soldier that they were grown to be. However, this could also be a play on words. This could be a means of introducing dissent against the Jedi generals, and thus making Order 66 a more appealing alternative, should the word be given. Several stunning visual events, and I'm not really sure what Drogon from Game of Thrones is doing right here, but we'll find out. So then we see the doors open, and there's a very menacing-looking Anakin. Or is this Vader? We are said to be witnessing the end, and we are promised that the conclusion of this series on television will directly bridge into the events of Revenge of the Sith. Anakin shares a tender, hollow moment with Padme, who is clutching her abdomen. Now She knows she's pregnant. Does he know she's pregnant? I don't believe so. I believe this is her calling him back home from the Outer Rim. When can you come back, Annie? Blah, 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 blah. And he's like, well, I'm doing hero Jedi shit, but I'll be back soon. Mwah. Then I think we're actually given a scene from the Battle of Coruscant, the beginning of Episode 3, where they're twisting and winding their way around droid uh, Separatist ships. And I have to wonder about this. Is it going to be chronological, or are they going to skip around in episodes? To where we finally come to Maul versus Ahsoka Tano. Now we know that both of them survive. We've read the novel... We've seen rebels, so they both walk away from this somehow. But how are these events going to play out? And especially since I believe that this entire speech of Darth Maul's is directed at Ahsoka Tano. He knows what's coming. He's telling her what's coming. She has to face that reality. And we also know that with the fall of Anakin Skywalker and the birth of Darth Vader, she is going to lose her ability to sense her master's presence in the Force, and thus believes she is truly alone. So yeah, it's a little bit odd to be hopeful about a Disney Lucasfilm project, but because it is Dave Filoni connecting the events of the Clone Wars to Revenge of the Sith, much like neural synapses i'm on board so there you have it my thoughts on season seven of the clone wars my name is immortal coil like share subscribe drop me a comment let me know what you want to see covered on future editions of savage spirituality check out my brothers and sisters in the fandom menace we are a group of channels dedicated to calling out the bullshit that is attempting to infiltrate our modern mythology and together, you and I can chair around the shit show that is masquerading as entertainment in 2020. And remember, if at first you don't succeed, find a bounty hunter and clone him over and over and over and over again. But not like